Hey, AP Calculus students, here we are once again uh, dealing with problem two from our function analysis worksheet. We're on part C of this particular problem where we're still dealing with a graph of f prime and being asked to sketch a graph of f of x. And as I did with uh, part B, I'm going to attack fashion. This. And I think it starts to, to be very important to pay close attention to the sign of that derivative that you're given here. So we notice that f prime of x has something kind of interesting going on. It seems like it's greater than zero almost all the time. I, I want to be a little careful here because it does seem to suggest here at the point uh, when x is zero that we're not really positive. We are perhaps equal to zero. So we could say something along the lines of um, on the interval, say negative. Now this. <laughs> Is, is kind of an interesting um, situation here. Um, it seems like the end behavior of this graph is pretty um, determined by uh, some, some solid endpoints here, perhaps. It's a little vague. Um, I really have no problems if we want to just consider this graph being continuous on up forever and ever. It makes very little difference, because if that were the case, then I could probably get by with saying negative infinity up to zero, and then once again, um, on the interval from zero to positive infinity. All right, now what that does, as we mentioned before, using the first derivative test, is that indicates then that our f of x graph should be increasing, um, definitely on the interval from negative infinity to zero, and then once again from zero to infinity. Now what it's doing at zero is, is uh, oh, a little interesting, and I think that we're gonna determine that by looking at the idea of what's going on with the second derivative. Now once again, in order to extract a second derivative from a first derivative graph, you have the tangent line. way that you can really get at that second derivative is to visualize what the slopes of these tangent lines are going to be. Now, mind you, we don't have to figure out what the exact slopes are. We just have to, again, figure out what their signs are. And hopefully it's obvious to you that the sign of the second derivative is definitely negative, less than zero, on the interval negative infinity to zero. And we can reason just the opposite, that the second derivative has a positive sign on the interval zero to positive infinity. Now, what that means is that our f of x graph will be concave uh, down on the first interval, and then f of x will be concave up on the interval 0 to infinity. So where do we take this? Well, I think we're all set to put things together. I think it's pretty clear, too, that at the point 0, x equals 0, we should have a point of inflection due to the change in our concavity. So if you can draw something that is always increasing, gets to the x value of zero, and then changes concavity from downward to upward, you've got it made. Now you could draw that in a variety of ways, this being just one of them, but it's very important that we all understand that this graph could have been positioned in a variety of ways, anywhere that I'm sh reflecting it here, and it would still be a possible whoops, excuse me, it would still be a possible sketch of f of x. Anyway, I hope this helps, and